English. I understand that the students here are uh, of senior years, therefore, like last year, I will uh, uh, speak to you in English so that we try to understand each other in the vein of uh, what our president is asking us. Uh, about a year ago, I had the pleasure of uh, uh, being here, opening uh, the Academic Diplomatic Club uh, in this beautiful building, and it was really a great pleasure, and uh, I'd like uh, to congratulate you all with this uh, very remarkable achievement. I hope that the activities of the club uh, were of great interest and uh, use to the students of uh, the Academy. Uh, we all come here, diplomats, businessmen, economists, uh, to impart our knowledge to you and to share our experience with you so that you uh, use this knowledge, this experience uh, in your future lives. Let me uh, also thank uh, your excellencies, uh, uh, representatives of the embassies, uh, uh, possibly diplomat business community uh, with uh, your time, for your time. I know that you are all busy people, uh, but uh, it is very good that the diplomatic community uh, here in Astana is supporting the academic, business, uh, the academic diplomatic club. Uh, I hope that the same uh, level of support uh, will be shown to the diplomatic business club, which we opened uh, quite recently uh, over the summer. Uh, the topic of my presentation is uh, very broad. Uh, I would prefer not giving you a lecture. I would prefer, like last year, um, uh, to share my thoughts with you. Uh, I will be thinking aloud in, your, uh, in front of you. And of course, I'm absolutely happy to take your questions at the end of my presentation. Uh, from the students and from the ambassadors, maybe. Uh, one year has passed and uh, we have witnessed that uh, the year has been uh, quite dynamic. Uh, many events have taken place uh, internationally, regionally, domestically. Uh, therefore, I will break down my presentation, um, uh, casting a look, uh, first of all, at our region and then broader and broader uh, in circles. What we see in our region is that uh, uh, Central Asia uh, continues to be an important and growing uh, emerging part of the world. Uh, we have uh, our neighbors uh, uh, facing their own uh, challenges of political and economic growth. Uh, uh, but uh, we have to recognize that uh, a big task of uh, integrating this region into one uh, here in the community is still a task for the future. Uh, individual countries, uh, as I said, face uh, their own uh, domestic uh, challenges of growth. Uh, in uh, Kyrgyzstan, we expect uh, uh, elections uh, to the parliament, which will uh, bring new uh, elements into the political life of this uh, uh, neighbor of Kazakhstan. Uh, Uzbekistan and Turkmenistan are facing uh, uh, economic uh, uh, challenges and uh, trying to cope with these challenges. In Tajikistan, just a few days ago, we had the uh, outbreak of uh, violence uh, with which this country is uh, facing and we hope that uh, the partners of Tajikistan will help uh, address these issues and we hope that this is just uh, a sporadic outburst uh, of violence, uh, not a systemic one, and we hope that uh, this is the case. Uh, issues like uh, water uh, cooperation, uh, border, borders, uh, trade facilitation, they still remain an issue in our part of the world and uh, I think we uh, have not yet reached uh, that uh, level of uh, partnership and cooperation where we would be able to uh, uh, resolve this very critical for our part of the world uh, uh, region. But efforts have been done incessantly. Uh, uh, I believe that uh, there is a political will to uh, find uh, viable ways of uh, addressing very challenging water issues. Uh, we still have the issue of uh, uh, new uh, water facilities like Ragun Dam, like Kambarata Dam in Kyrgyzstan. Uh, they have to be addressed uh, in a um, consensus basis. A consensus is not yet built uh, and uh, these countries continue to uh, try to develop a meaningful and resultful dialogue in these uh, uh, um, uh, critical areas. If you take broader region here, of course, uh, the first thing uh, comes to mind uh, is Afghanistan. Situation in Afghanistan uh, also remains very challenging. 
uh, over the summer we saw major outburst of violence. Uh, uh, this country faces uh, big challenges in terms of economic growth. Uh, the national dialogue uh, is still uh, a matter in question. Uh, the government of uh, President Ghani and uh, uh, head of the executive authority, uh, Mr. Abdullah Abdullah, they are putting their uh, enormous efforts to uh, develop dialogue, uh, and uh, we see that the international community is trying to support uh, these efforts. But uh, so far, both on the political front and on the economic front, uh, uh, Afghanistan uh, still is facing lots of uh, challenges, and uh, we hope that uh, with the support of uh, 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 internal uh, consensus building uh, process and with the support of uh, uh, external powers, particularly neighboring powers, uh, uh, these issues will be uh, uh, successfully addressed. For that matter, let me mention uh, that we had a visit uh, by Prime Minister Modi, uh, by uh, Prime Minister of Pakistan, uh, Nawaz Sharif. Uh, these were important uh, visits to uh, Central Asia, and we hope that uh, uh, the uh, critical role uh, these countries uh, uh, can and should play vis-a-vis uh, -vis the situation of Afghanistan will bear uh, very uh, beautiful fruits. Uh, we expect uh, President Ghani uh, this November in Kazakhstan and uh, we will continue our dialogue with, uh, with uh, this country. One aspect which uh, is of concern to us is the rise of new violent force in Afghanistan which is showing up uh, in Afghanistan is Daesh. Uh, there are different uh, confusing reports uh, of the origin of Daesh in Afghanistan. Uh, but uh, uh, this is a matter of uh, collective uh, concern uh, for countries of Central Asia and broader. Uh, it is a concern for, for example, uh, collective security treaty organization, the Shanghai grouping. Uh, so we all try to understand the origin of this uh, uh, new phenomenon in Afghanistan and we try to understand how we collectively can address and uh, address this challenge and uh, prevent it from uh, spreading uh, into dangerous forms. Uh, we hope that uh, we will not be caught unprepared uh, if uh, this uh, uh, growth of this uh, violent new force in Afghanistan will go unchecked. Uh, we should prepare ourselves, both domestically and uh, collectively, to address uh, the issue of uh, the appearance of Daesh in our part of the world. Uh, but this is a part of the bigger problem of Daesh uh, globally and particularly in the Middle East. Uh, to the east we have China. Uh, China is a uh, uh, big, big giant. As we all know, uh, it is uh, continuing its uh, uh, dynamic uh, uh, economic growth, but uh, we also see so recently uh, that China also faced uh, uh, some uh, economic challenge, particularly in the financial market. Uh, but uh, one uh, interesting story about China is that uh, the new policy they have announced, uh, One Belt, One Way, uh, of which we are part through the economic belt of the Silk Way, uh, is unfolding quite aggressively, quite successfully. Uh, China, together with its partners, uh, have a special institution to support this policy, uh, the Asian Bank for Infrastructure uh, Investments. Uh, they have established a special fund uh, for Silk Road with uh, enormous resources uh, to support the uh, 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 concepts they have developed, the connect connectivity concepts throughout uh, Eurasia and uh, throughout the Asian Pacific region. Uh, we have uh, visited recently uh, uh, China. We, you know that uh, my president, our president was in China uh, on a state visit just a few days ago. And uh, let me tell you that we were uh, um, I'm happy to hear that Chinese authorities are quite confident uh, in understanding the origins of their uh, economic problems they're facing currently, particularly on the financial market, and they're confident that they will be able to address those issues. Therefore, the focus on uh, economic uh, connectivity, infrastructure connectivity, was uh, um, clearly seen uh, during our negotiations, and I'm sure during the negotiations of uh, Chinese leaders with other visiting uh, heads of state and government uh, who were part of the 70th uh, uh, anniversary of uh, the victory over the uh, Japanese militarism. Uh, but uh, uh, I think uh, one interesting aspect is that uh, uh, leaders are talking about uh, developing 
a synergy and throwing bridges between uh, different uh, uh, integration efforts uh, in the Eurasian space. First of all, uh, the Eurasian Economic Union, uh, the Shanghai Grouping, and now the uh, uh, broad concept of uh, one way, uh, uh, one belt, one way, and uh, uh, the common uh, consensus which is emerging, uh, which is not yet uh, crystallized, but the common consensus that uh, there should be efforts to uh, develop synergy between these uh, uh, different political and economic trends in our space. <laughs> For that matter, uh, of course, uh, our relations uh, and situation in Russia is very important, uh, as all uh, in the world, uh, and in this part of uh, the world, Russia is also facing economic challenges. Uh, these uh, challenges are um, enhanced or multiplied by uh, the policy of sanctions of the West towards Russia. Uh, of course, this doesn't uh, make uh, life both in Russia and in neighboring countries uh, easier, uh, but uh, I think uh, we understand that through different instruments uh, we can address those challenges. Uh, one uh, feature which uh, characterized last year was uh, 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 difficult relations uh, between uh, the West and Russia uh, over a number of issues, particularly over Ukraine. And uh, of course, this brings me to the uh, Ukrainian crisis. Uh, this is one of the deepest crises in our part of the world, and it continues to unfold. Unfortunately, uh, the Minsk agreements, uh, for which we all worked very hard, uh, is not yet. Uh, fully implemented. We hope that, uh, and we agree with all uh, who say uh, quite firmly that the only basis uh, to address efficiently uh, the Ukrainian crisis, Ukrainian crisis is to fully implement uh, the Minsk I and Minsk, Minsk II agreements. So this is uh, a situation uh, in the uh, near neighborhood of Kazakhstan. Of course, we hear very uh, disturbing signals from, uh, from the Middle East. Uh, this touches us uh, directly and indirectly. Uh, Syrian crisis, Iraq crisis, now we have Yemen uh, situation. Um, uh, this, of course, uh, uh, does not uh, make uh, our lives uh, much easier. Uh, there is a lot of uh, human suffering, there is a lot of uh, economic suffering, uh, and this all makes uh, political environment, uh, uh, not only in the Middle East, but in the, enti in the entire world, uh, quite difficult to operate with. Uh, uh, we, we know that uh, Europe uh, has been also uh, caught uh, in the crisis. Uh, the entire summer we were watching uh, how European uh, leaders were trying to address the economic challenges and help uh, uh, the situation in Greece, uh, which was at the core of uh, the European crisis. And now we are witnessing uh, 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 yet another very uh, 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 precarious situation with the migration crisis in, in Europe. And, uh, these are all interrelated things, uh, and we hope that uh, um, viable solutions will be found. Uh, we hear different opinions. Uh, uh, there are lots of emotions, of course, but uh, this is uh, one of the most challenging uh, uh, events uh, uh, which we saw over the last year, and uh, it is unfolding in front of our eyes, and it is very difficult, of course, to give judgments and. Uh, uh, but we hope that uh, collective will uh, of uh, European countries, uh, their economic uh, potential, uh, their uh, principles and values uh, will allow uh, uh, this uh, migration crisis to be uh, overcome uh, quite uh, efficiently. It will take time, it will take pain, it will take uh, uh, courageous decisions, uh, but uh, we hope that uh, the collective wisdom of Europe uh, uh, will uh, allow this to happen. United States, uh, the uh, global uh, uh, power, uh, also uh, lots of events in the world depend on the United States, and everyone watches what's going in the United States, of course. Uh, two uh, basic uh, uh, points will uh, explain uh, how we see the situation in the United States. Of course, the economic potential of the United States remains to be the largest in the world. It is the driver for many uh, economic uh, uh, events and uh, achievements. But uh, again, uh, the U.S. economy is showing different, uh, uh, differing uh, uh, trends. Uh, we hope that uh, the United States
United States authorities will find ways of addressing uh, the economic challenge because the economic challenge because uh, U.S. economic situation, of course, uh, has the greatest impact uh, on the global economy. Uh, United States also uh, is on the verge of uh, uh, presidential elections. Uh, this is a major political development, and uh, uh, everyone uh, is watching uh, the campaign uh, and uh, what uh, will be the result of the campaign. Of course, uh, the political temperature in the United States uh, has uh, an impact on the global situation. Uh, and uh, we uh, uh, believe that uh, it will come to a logical uh, uh, resolution. Of course, uh, the right of the United States uh, people uh, to elect uh, is with them, and we hope that uh, uh, elections uh, will uh, uh, produce uh, positive results uh, for the uh, global uh, situation. Uh, on a global scale, economic and financial crisis is something which everyone is talking about. Uh, oil prices, commodity prices have went down, and of course, countries like Kazakhstan uh, are facing uh, uh, great difficulties in, uh, in this uh, very uh, uh, precarious situation. Uh, and uh, this uh, causes uh, lots of uh, uh, turbulence uh, in global uh, financial uh, markets. Uh, so the uh, global economy is under um, difficult situation. Uh, and uh, we, uh, in our part of the world, in Kazakhstan, should uh, clearly understand uh, what is lying behind these uh, economic difficulties and what to do uh, at home. Climate change is another challenge. Uh, we are expecting a major uh, Paris event, Paris conference at the end of the year, and uh, we believe that uh, uh, this uh, event should not be uh, yet another talking shop, but a target-oriented, result-oriented event. Kazakhstan on its part is preparing uh, with this approach. We will be taking commitments. Uh, we are working uh, for these commitments uh, in the approach of the Paris event. Uh, but bigger uh, um, uh, commitments are already pronounced by Kazakhstan. Uh, by 2030, we are going to green our economy uh, by 30%, and by 2050, uh, by 50%. Uh, this is a very uh, strong commitment, and uh, it is uh, imprinted in our practical uh, uh, activities uh, in our uh, legislation. Uh, so this is a very serious effort on the part of Kazakhstan and this is an effort to be watched uh, quite seriously. Uh, one good news was of course Iran and the situation around the Iranian nuclear program. Uh, uh, we are very happy that uh, it's coming again to a logical conclusion. Uh, we hope that uh, the debate in the Congress uh, and debate in the Iranian parliament uh, will allow this uh, very uh, um, complex agreement uh, to come by. Uh, we are very proud that Kazakhstan had a play, uh, had a role in, uh, uh, in this agreement. As you know, we have hosted two rounds of negotiations, and uh, um, we are very glad that eventually these negotiations, which were restarted in Kazakhstan, uh, came to this very uh, promising uh, conclusion. And again, uh, we believe that uh, the implementation of the agreement may be a game changer, a uh, game, changer, game changer globally, and game changer particularly in our region. Uh, this may open lots of economic opportunities, lots of uh, uh, connectivity opportunities, uh, and will uh, um, it has a potential to improve the political climate, political environment quite seriously. So this is our hope. And we watch the situation quite closely. So this brings me to uh, uh, what we do in Kazakhstan, uh, having uh, or observing the situation in the region, in the world, uh, what we are doing uh, back home uh, uh, in this environment. Uh, the, uh, the, the answer is very simple. You all know, you are all witnesses of what we are doing at home. Of course, uh, uh, our first uh, uh, effort is domestic effort. Uh, we uh, understand uh, that uh, Kazakhstan uh, is sailing in the world and cannot exist uh, uh, in isolation. Therefore, all the shocks which are coming, the shocks which we cannot avoid, uh, but we, have, we can prepare uh, instruments and develop instruments uh, which can be a cushion uh, to uh, uh, reduce uh, the shocks of uh, those external events. 
uh, president came up uh, with a <clears throat> very uh, ambitious program of Nur uh, Let me remind you that a uh, similar effort uh, decades ago was done uh, by the U.S. President uh, Roosevelt. Uh, he called this uh, program a New Deal. Uh, one difference is that uh, New Deal policy in the U.S. was caused by the uh, deep uh, internal crisis in the United States, uh, whereas our situation is caused by the external uh, volatility and uh, instability. Uh, but the core of that is uh, the same. Uh, we are killing uh, a number of birds with one uh, program. Uh, first of all, we are improving our uh, internal connectivity. As you know, Nurlejo uh, is not about only motor roads, it's about uh, all sorts of roads. Uh, it's about uh, uh, industrial infrastructure, pipelines, uh, different community lines, uh, uh, industrial facilities, and most importantly, it's about also the social infrastructure. Uh, social infrastructure covers house building, uh, housing for uh, residents, uh, for population, uh, hospitals and school. So it's a comprehensive uh, program. Uh, the uh, resources are allocated, quite serious resources are allocated with, with the support of our partners. Uh, this uh, program will create thousands of jobs in Kazakhstan and uh, will uh, rectify the uh, in a proper or um, uh, inadequate uh, infrastructure system uh, which we inherited uh, from Soviet days. Uh, therefore, uh, the goal of that uh, or this program is uh, very multiple. Uh, we hope that uh, it will bring lots of uh, uh, economic opportunities to uh, remote parts of Kazakhstan. Uh, connectivity is the central word in, uh, in the policy of uh, today of uh, our leader and the uh, and Nurlijol plays uh, quite central role in that. Uh, another program which the President announced is the five reforms. Uh, this is also a very uh, ambitious and very serious response to uh, external shocks. Uh, the areas on which uh, he offers us to focus are very important for uh, future nation building, uh, rule of law, uh, human capital development, uh, infrastructure development and diversification building our identity or enhancing our identity and uh, increasing responsibility and accountability for all the institutions in our society. These are uh, very important uh, areas uh, for Kazakhstan to emerge uh, as a strong, uh, self-sustaining, uh, uh, independent, uh, uh, forward-looking nation. Uh, this is a bold program. Again, uh, uh, much will depend uh, how these uh, 100 steps will be implemented. Um, uh, much will be dependent on, on the young generation, on the students, uh, on you uh, who sit in this room. And uh, we hope that uh, these uh, 100 steps will be, first of all, properly understood, uh, well comprehended, uh, and then uh, through this comprehension and understanding, uh, proper tools uh, should be developed to implement this program, uh, these 100 steps, uh, which will change uh, uh, the entire picture in Kazakhstan, economically, politically, socially. So this is a big hope and this is a big answer in difficult times uh, to cushion the external shocks, as I said. Uh, externally, Kazakhstan uh, continues to rely on partnerships. Uh, the new uh, feature for our foreign policy maybe is connectivity. We are uh, putting a focus on connectivity. Uh, connectivity in uh, all shapes and forms. Therefore, we embrace uh, uh, whatever opportunities the Eurasian Economic uh, Union will give us in terms of uh, connecting ourselves economically, industrially, uh, socially, otherwise. Uh, we embrace the concept of uh, uh, Chinese leaders of uh, the economic growth of the Silk Road. Uh, we uh, see lots of opportunities uh, for connectivity uh, in the uh, situation around Iran. Uh, for that matter, Kazakhstan, uh, Turkmenistan and Iran have parted and built the railroad, which is operating. Uh, uh, we now have access to the south, to the, to the port of Bandar Abbas in Iran. Uh, with uh, different visiting leaders, we're discussing different other opportunities for connectivity. With Indian Prime Minister, we discussed uh, uh, different projects uh, related to uh, energy resources, transportation, electricity, transportation. Uh, with Pakistani leader, we were discussing huge, massive uh, infrastructure project, project uh, from this part of the world going all the way to the Arabian
can see the port of Guadar. Uh, so uh, opportunities are there and uh, we'll continue to develop uh, uh, this uh, principle of our uh, foreign policy. Uh, and I, do, uh, I already mentioned the visits uh, on my list here. We have um, India, I mentioned, uh, Pakistan, I mentioned, China, I mentioned. Uh, President Putin is coming uh, to Kazakhstan uh, in October. Uh, in November, no, in, in October, sorry. Uh, we have visits, uh, expected visits by uh, uh, the presidents of Brazil, for example, uh, Egypt, Afghanistan, as I said. Uh, my president will travel to South Africa, uh, to Qatar, to Saudi Arabia. So the list is very full. Uh, and this is all about uh, getting our message across, what we try to do domestically, and how, how we see the world uh, going on in our uh, region and uh, globally. Um, from the same vein, I, I'd like to mention uh, such achievements as uh, our WTO accession, uh, our expected uh, signature of uh, enhanced partnership and cooperation agreement with Europe. We have become part of uh, the ASEAN Europe uh, Forum from last year. These are huge uh, achievements and uh, milestone, but the, at the core of all these achievements lies uh, our principle of uh, partnership and connectivity. Uh, we'll continue to rely on, uh, rely on a balanced approach, which is uh, that as a multi-vector foreign policy. Uh, this balanced approach uh, is the most natural way of behaving yourself uh, uh, where you are the largest landlocked country in the world and where you are surrounded by different uh, political and economic trends regionally and globally. Uh, terrorism and violence uh, is something new. Uh, the uh, extent to which uh, it has spread all, all over the world is something new and uh, uh, I think that uh, countries of the world are even big powers uh, are caught uh, are uh, be, uh, feeling themselves uh, uh, quite uh, perplexed uh, let me use this word uh, we we have uh, uh, the experience of dealing with Taliban, with Mujahideen, with uh, others, the new phenomenon, uh, the violent extremism, Daesh, as we know it, uh, is something uh, which poses a serious threat now to everyone. Uh, even uh, such remote countries like Canada, for example, uh, or Australia, uh, are not immune uh, from this uh, uh, very ugly phenomenon and uh, collective effort is needed. Uh, everyone is talking about collective efforts by joining efforts, joining resources, joining potentials to address this great danger, but still uh, action is not there, unfortunately. We in Kazakhstan feel ourselves uh, a bit frustrated that action on a global political level is not yet uh, formulated and crystallized. Uh, for that matter, we expect uh, uh, a meaningful dialogue in New York uh, uh, in a few years, in two weeks' time. Uh, uh, the 70th anniversary of the United Nations uh, will start its work uh, in uh, uh, New York. Uh, this is the 70th anniversary and uh, uh, it, will, it should give an opportunity to uh, give a very serious analysis of what has been done, uh, what was done properly, what was done improperly, and what should be done in the future. Uh, uh, the Secretary General and uh, Member States uh, hope that uh, uh, this coming session will be uh, quite uh, uh, different from others. Uh, Secretary General is coming with the post-2015 agenda. Uh, this comes uh, on the background of uh, many countries not uh, 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 implementing uh, the previous uh, Millennium Development Goals. Uh, now the, uh, pri uh, the Secretary General is calling everyone to uh, adopt and uh, start implementing the uh, Sustainable Development Goals. So there are many challenges and uh, we understand that the session and the debate during different uh, events during the session uh, will be quite uh, uh, difficult and very complex. Uh, just uh, as a reflection of that, uh, let me remind you that uh, it will be not only a general debate at the session, but we'll have the uh, post-2015 summit, we'll have the peacekeeping summit, we'll have the South-South summit, we'll have the uh, um, uh, terrorism summit, and many other events on, uh, uh, which will take place in New York. And of course, uh, countries are coming to New York with hopes. 
with great hopes uh, that uh, collective wisdom uh, will allow uh, uh, political leaders and countries to agree on a uh, realistic plan how to address those issues. Terrorism, violence, uh, global standoff, uh, sporadic uh, hotspots in the world, uh, climate change. These are all the challenges which we face. And uh, Kazakhstan uh, is among those countries which come with great hopes. Uh, President of Kazakhstan uh, is uh, going to New York. He is preparing quite seriously. Uh, he has his ideas uh, and he will offer them to global leaders in New York. And we hope that uh, his ideas and his uh, proposals will be heard and uh, we'll find ways of implementing them. Uh, on this note, I'd like to uh, stop my uh, presentation or my uh, uh, flow of thoughts. I don't know whether you like them or not, but uh, at least uh, this is was a free flow of thoughts. Uh, of thoughts. Uh, I will be absolutely happy, of course, to answer the questions of uh, the students. Uh, but. Uh, uh, this type of uh, things where uh, older generation, uh, active diplomats and politicians meet with younger generation, uh, with uh, future politicians, uh, outstanding uh, business uh, and political leaders is very uh, helpful and useful. I envy the students uh, for, uh, that you have this opportunity. Don't waste time. Uh, use these opportunities to the maximum. This is an opportunity for you to grow, uh, to better understand uh, what's going on uh, in the world. Uh, with our lives. You have a very uh, broad geography of our, our ambassadors. Uh, you have European ambassadors, you have ambassadors from Asia, you have ambassadors uh, from the CIA space, uh, you have ambassadors from Arab world. Uh, the entire world geography is in uh, front of you. Uh, and uh, as I know them, uh, they're always very amicable and very open uh, in their contacts with particularly uh, young generation of Kazakhstan. Therefore, I strongly encourage you uh, to use this uh, opportunity of the academic, uh, diplomatic academic club to uh, um, better shape your uh, future lives and better shape uh, the future of Kazakhstan. Thank you very much.